Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make this uh, Paw Patrol figure, which is Marshall. Um, so I've started off with some white fondant, uh, I use Saracino, and we're just going to roll like a sausage shape. But we're going to flatten it off on one, uh, well not flatten it off, we're just going to bulk it out at the bottom. And that's going to give us the bottom of Marshall. So I'm just doing this by turning it between my fingers and concentrating on the top half of the body and keeping the bottom part quite bulky. Um, and so when you do this, it's going to make it a little bit longer. And so we're just going to trim off the excess from the top and then work the neck back in. Using your uh, finger and thumb either side at the bottom, we're just going to dint it slightly that's going to give us space for the legs. So for the back legs, we're doing a similar thing. We're going to roll a sausage, but then we're going to leave part of it uh, quite bulky at one side and flatten it. And this is going to give us like the top part of the leg that joins onto the body. We're going to fold it in half. Um, and then we're going to set that to one side, roll a ball of fondant and flatten it. And then just with a scriber needle or a scalpel or a little knife, you're just going to put some lines in there, just two, and those are going to give us the feet of the paws. Trim off any excess if needed. And then before we stick this on the body, we're going to pop it to one side, um, make the other one, and just allow it some time just to firm up a little bit before we put it on the body. So that's one paw, one leg even, should I say. So for the front legs, we're going to roll again a long sausage and we're just going to cut this in half. So I prefer to do it all in one uh, chunk and that, that way I know that it's similar width from start to finish. And you're just going to push it on the table, just the bottom part, um, and that's going to create our paw. Again, just marking in the feet. So push it on the table and then just twist it between your fingers just to go over any areas that's needed and just thin out underneath the top of that. Now these are going to stick onto the body so we need to cut off at an angle and try to get them roughly both the same size. So now we're going to do the head so we're going to use our fingers just to create a line across the middle of the ball that we've just rolled and just flattening that with our thumbs. So you can see that when you look at it from the side, you've got a natural curve out, and this is gonna help form the nose. So just with the end of a paintbrush, we're gonna mark in some uh, bits either side of the face, and that's gonna to try to give us our nose that we want. So all we're gonna do now is use our thumbs and fingers, and we're just gonna press the cheeks down and pull the nose area up. Now, it's just a case of re-going over the area and just gradually pulling it forward, pushing it back in place with the uh, paintbrush end. Now, I've tried a few different ways to do this. I've tried adding a nose on, um, but this is by far the easiest way that I have found to do it. So, once you've got your cheeks and your nose in place, you're going to smooth out any lines and then we're just going to pinch the nose just to separate it a little bit more and then what we're going to do is we're going to cut the mouth line in. Put in some eye holes with the, the little bits of your finger and then just with a really tiny small ball tool we're just going to put a dot either side where we want the mouth to go. And then with a scalpel or a scriber needle, we're just going to go and create that line across the bottom of the mouth. Now you're just going to put a little line up towards the nose. And then with a Dresden tool, we're just going to create a little pocket for the nose to sit in. A tiny bit of black fondant in a bit of a triangle. And then we're make, going to make sure that the bottom of the mouth is just tucked in slightly under the top. Um, and that's just going to give it a bit more of a, a natural look. We're going to create the eye sockets. So again, just with the Dresden tool, 
and we're going to create like a, a really wide kind of like almond shape um i always do this uh, with my eyes instead of just sticking them straight on i just feel like it looks a lot better you're going to do that on both sides of the face trying to get them both as equal as possible and then once you've done that we're going to roll out some uh, bits of white fondant just to stick in place now they do need to be quite small because you don't want them to protrude protrude uh, out further than what uh, we've just kind of like dug in so we're going to stick those in um, and then using the Dresden tool again just to spread that out now I'm spreading from sort of like uh, the edges outwards and the edge the edge uh, downwards so that it's still got quite a nice curved shape <clears throat> um, I find this much easier again than trying to get something in there that's the same size of the as the hole we've just created so I've got some tiny bits of blue fondant. We're going to pop these in and then you can see that I'm using the Dresden tool again and I'm just spreading that uh, blue out in the eye. So I find this easier to do than drawing it on because I can feel like I can get them more symmetrical this way. Also, if you need to move it, you can move it without actually messing up the whole eye or having to take off the colour. Um, also, because it's a different colour, so it's like a lighter blue, when I paint on the darker blue, it automatically you know, gives it a bit of a better look than trying to paint it on. Some black, still doing the same method, so a small ball, rolling it quite small, and then using the Dresden tool just to spread that out. Now, they do need to be quite small so that it is quite thin, so that when you're looking at the dog from the side, you're not having steps where there's the colour and then there's the black. <clears throat> so once we've done that and you're happy with that, we're going to go on and just paint the edge of the eye in a dark blue. Now I believe that I'm using sky blue uh, from Sugar Flare and I'm just painting around the edges and then once I've wet the brush again, I'm then going to just bring some of that colour into uh, the eye. So you can see I'm just colouring it in, leaving the majority colour of, of that on the outline rather than on the inside of the eye. And I'm just neating it, uh, just making some lines above the eye just for the kind of like the, where the eyebrow starts or the, the brow bone starts or the top of the eye socket. I'm not quite sure what you call that bit. <clears throat> so just wetting where the eye joins the fur and I've just rolled out a really thin piece of black fondant and we're just going to pop that on and that's going to give us our I guess like eye line the eyelid kind of part of the pup we're just going to cut off the excess and you only need a very very slight small bit of water to put this on if you use too much it's just going to slide everywhere <clears throat> and then it'll just make a mess and you'll probably need to start the head again so I use a tea towel uh, not a tea towel a paper towel at the side of me and I just take off the excess water and I just pop that on so now some really small blobs of white fondant this is just for the light reflecting the eye you can paint these on if you want um, and now we're just going to put him some clothes on so I've got some red Renshaw's extra and I'm just roughly chopping it to size. I want it to be slightly bigger than the body so that when I chop it off, there's no bits of the body exposed. So we're going to wet where we want it to go. Now, the jacket should start sort of like above the bum area. I'm going to fold it around and trim it off through the middle. So the reason I'm trimming it off here is we're going to put a zip on that's going to cover the join of the jacket. I'm going to push it together and then just pinch out the top, being careful not to trap any air in. And then we're just going to chop that bit off <clears throat> using a knife. You could use scissors if you wanted. And then a little bit of grey 
just to cover up that line and create a zip area. Again, chopping off the excess. And then these are the legs we made earlier. So we're going to cut out at a slight angle. So you can see I'm just taking off a wedge there. And that just means that when I did this, because when they were stuck on the body, they were a little bit bulky. So if I've chopped off a little bit, it kind of doesn't come out as much. And it just looked a bit better. So you don't have to do that if you don't want to. But the Saracena has been sat for a bit, so it's a bit firmer. So just some uh, blobs of red. Uh, these are just going to sit on the top of the chest. And these are going to be kind of like, I guess, the armholes that the legs sit in. So you just want to work out roughly where these are going to go. And then we're going to stick the red bits on first. So I'm just going to trim off a little bit of excess to make them a bit shorter. So we're going to stick those on. So at the minute they look like boobs from this angle. And just a little bit of water to stick that down. And then our leg, again, a tiny bit of water. We're going to round off the top a little bit. And I was going to ball tool that before I stuck this in, but then I realised I'd already wet it and it was sticky. So I'm just using the Dresden tool just to tuck in the top of the arm and then just push the red fondant over the top. So now a kebab skewer through the middle. We're going to chop off the top of his head and then we're going to try to stick this uh, onto the top of the kebab skewer. So just some tiny little bits of black for the eyebrows. Now the reason I chopped off the top of his head is that it's so much easier to make a hat that sits on a flat head than it is to make a hat that sits on a round head. I have no idea how to do it. Um, I always struggle, so I just chop the top off and work from there. It's a lot easier. So trimming down the kebab skew because I've made it a bit tall. <clears throat> now, I've got the head on. So what I'm going to do is just taper in the top bit and then I've got a thick piece of yellow. This is going to be for the collar and we're just going to sit that on and then pop the head on, making sure the collar's tucked around nice and neat. I've moved his eyebrows, so I'm just going to put those back on in place. So hindsight, I should have done this first before I put the eyebrows on. So now for the hat, so we're just going to roll out some fondant and I've used a fairly small circle cutter to have the hat on. This is the base of the hat and then I've rolled kind of like a sausage that's tapered at one side and that's going to sit on top. So you can see it's kind of like slopes down at one side and I'm just flattening off the bottom a little bit of water. <clears throat> and sticking it on just thinning out the edge of the bottom of the hat and whilst I'm there I've realized that he hasn't got ears and we need those so some uh, cones that we've just flattened and we're just going to point one end and then fold over the top end ever so slightly and thin out the sides so there's the little fold that I've done. And we're just going to stick that on to the top of the head. Do the same with the other side. So just coning it off, chopping off the top, and then sticking that on and putting that in place. And then we're just going to wet it again and put the circle on for the bottom of the hat. <clears throat> And just pressing it down and then the top part of the hat so you could have a kebab skewer going all the way through here if you really wanted to for support I've got some <coughs> yellow fondant that I've rolled out and we're just going to wrap that around the base of the hat so the bit of the hat that joins on to the top of the hat just using a little bit of water to stick it down and then we're going to create the decor for the hat. So he's got some stripes that go across. 
and we're just going to trim that off so he's got two of those i believe just using again some water you can use edible glue if you want to i just prefer water because i think edible glue knackers the brushes and i do that myself anyway so he's got a little bit at the front of his hat I don't know what type of shape it is, but if you look at a picture, you'll kind of see roughly what you need to cut out. And I'm just rounding off the edges for that, trying to get it the same on either side. I'm going to stick that on the front like I have done there. And then he's got sort of like a, a chunkier bit that goes from the front of the hat all the way to the back. And so we're just going to stick that on again with a little bit of water. <clears throat> so there's his hat I always find sometimes it's easier to push it in place with the brush so now we're going to create the shield <clears throat> so it's kind of like a triangle with a rounded top and we're just going to stick that in that other part and then we're going to create some little pause so just the same gray we're just going to chop this down really small uh, so you want a bigger one and then three smaller ones and that's going to give us the paw that's in the shield on the top and we're just going to stick these on just using the brush so i've rolled them into a ball flattened them slightly wetting the shield and we're just going to pick them up and put them on so it's such a small detail it doesn't have to be perfect now I've got some black licorice and I'm just going to paint on some blobs so I've looked at a picture of him he's got quite a few on his ear very small amount on his face um, and then some on his front legs and so I've painted these on. I left them to dry overnight before I was able to touch him um, and put him on the cake. So they don't have to be too neat, just very random black splodges. And that's Marshall complete. So here's the cake that I put him on. I'm also doing a tutorial for Chase as well. I hope you've liked today's video. If you have, please uh, give a big thumbs up, leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. Um, and if you'd like to see more of my videos, please click the links on the screen now. Thanks for watching.